When I do podcasts and seminars, I always allow part of them for people to ask questions. And what I've found over the years is that there's certain questions that regularly get asked, regardless of where I go throughout the world, I get asked certain types of questions. And so I thought I'd do just a few talks around some of the most common questions that I get asked. And one of the things you'll get to know about me is that when people ask me a question, usually before I give them kind of the final answer, I come at the question from different angles to build a a perspective, a, a bigger picture than maybe just a simple answer would give. Because I think with complex trauma, it's really important to understand that there's usually multiple factors and issues that are connected to some of the questions that we have. And we need to be able to see all of those different factors if we're really going to process through the question well. So one of the most common questions that I get asked is, if I'm working on my complex trauma and I start healing from it, then I'm going to look at my childhood. And when I look at my childhood, I'm going to look at how my parents raised me. And I'm going to see that they did some stuff that neglected me or abused me. And I'm going to be saying, hey, they did that wrong. And kind of blaming them for how I turned out in a way. Isn't that just being a victim? And I think that's such an important question to think through for people. So let me begin by saying, to accurately diagnose your own personal problems and see that others contributed to your problems doesn't necessarily mean that it you're acting like a victim. It, it might mean, and I'll explain that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're playing a victim. So a victim is a person who, as they look at their problems today and all the things that they're doing in their life, they blame everybody for their problems. They go, oh, it's because of my terrible childhood. It's because of this and this. I can't help it. It's not my fault. They don't accept ownership for their present day decisions and they don't change. What we are talking about in true healthy recovery is a person who sees that other people mom and dad, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, etc., all created an environment from them that was not healthy, that caused them to be neglected or abused or abandoned, that hurt them deeply. They didn't start the problems. Other people started the problems. But they see that they're the only ones that can end the problems in their life. Others can't. They are the ones that now have to take ownership for their own decisions. They have to accept responsibility to change their life. They can't give that power to somebody else. And so they're going to take responsibility for their own decisions to improve their life regardless of how difficult it is. That person is not a victim. Yes, they're accurately assessing what's happened in their life and say, yep, that was because of what mom and dad did. That's partly mom and dad's fault, but I am not going to remain a victim. I was a victim, but I'm not going to remain a victim. So a person who is a victim, if you're following me, is a person who continues to give the power to determine their life to everybody else. So they'll complain about, oh, this happened to me, this person did this to me, my life sucks, everything is so difficult, and, and they'll complain about it, and they'll act like they want their life to improve, that they want stuff to stop hurting so much, that they want stop having all these crises in their life, but they won't do anything about it themselves. It's like everybody else is supposed to stop doing what they're doing so they have the perfect environment all of a sudden. So they still are acting like a victim in the sense that they're powerless to improve their life or to change their life. Whereas a healthy person in recovery, a non-victim is saying, yes, a lot of crap happened to me. Yes, it's a lot of other people's fault, but I am not going to continue to give them power to determine my life. I am now going to take that power myself and make choices to live in a healthy way, to determine what my life will become, 
So that's the goal that we have for people. But let me take you back, just come at this from another perspective. A child growing up in complex trauma, any child, they are totally dependent upon other people to meet their needs, to love them, to protect them, to guide them. They can't do that themselves. They are totally dependent on others. They have no power. That All the power belongs to somebody else. So when other people in positions of power neglect them and abuse them, they are truly a victim. And they can do nothing about it. What happens for that child is they try to adapt as best they can, given the limited tools they have, to try to survive. But they are a legitimate victim of their circumstances and the people in their lives. So the goal in recovery is to not blame others as if that then gives me an excuse to make bad choices today. That's not what we're talking about here. And that's what a lot of people, when they use this argument, oh, you're just playing the victim by blaming others. No, I would only be playing the victim if I'm still blaming others for choices I'm making today. The choices I'm making today are my choices. I can still try to blame others, but that is giving them the power and that is keeping me stuck. So what happens in recovery? To heal from my wounds, I have to see how those wounds were created. I have to see the things that influenced me to, ad to behave and adapt the way I did. I have to see my past accurately. That's not blaming. That's just seeing how my past shaped me so that I can change it, so that I can understand it. I want to see my part in that, that I was in these painful circumstances. I adapted. I made decisions on what I needed to do to try to survive these unhealthy circumstances. And what I thought was those were good decisions. They were good adaptations because I was surviving. But what I didn't realize was that they were actually maladaptations because they set me up with ways of coping and relating and thinking and dealing with emotions that would make me quite unhealthy in my adult life. So one of the things that I want people to see when they think about this question is this. For most people in complex trauma, others started the trauma. They hurt the child. They did things to the child that caused the child to have to adapt. But at some point in the child's life, they got to a point where they continued the bad decisions even though they knew they were bad decisions. They continued to lie even though they knew they shouldn't lie. They continued to manipulate even though they saw it was hurting others and themselves. So others started the process, but at some point they continued the process. They continued the adaptations once they realized that they were actually maladaptations. And so what a victim would do is continue to make all of these bad decisions and continue to blame other people for them. True recovery is saying, whoa, I am now making continual bad decisions that I could stop. I am responsible to stop. And so a person who's doing recovery well is starting to realize when they started to maintain the maladaptations, even though they were aware of them, and they start to stop them. And so the goal of recovery is first to diagnose all the forces that shape me, how that all influenced me. That's not to blame. That's just to understand. So that I can change. So that I can see I didn't start the mess, but I'm the only one who can stop the mess. I'm the only one who can clean it up. It is now totally on me to get my life healthy. It is my responsibility. So it's possible for Many people, and many people that I deal with, come into recovery, they go, I hate my life, I got so much problem, I need a better life. But then you find that they still are acting like a victim. They still are saying, it's everybody else's fault, everybody else needs to stop hurting me, everybody else 
needs to stop being bad people. But you go, well, why don't you set boundaries? Why don't you stand up for yourself? Oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. They're still playing a victim. They're still acting powerless. They're still not making the necessary hard decisions to get a healthy life. They're expecting everybody else to do it for them. That person is never going to get recovery. They're going to stay stuck in this victim mentality. And so what I'm hoping you see is to, be, to accurately assess your childhood and to blame your parents for what happened then does not necessarily make you a victim. Because a healthy person goes, yeah, they screwed me up. But as I understand all this, I see now that I can actually get a healthy life and change. And I am going to do that. That person's no longer a victim. They were a victim, but they're not a victim. Sadly, many people that were a victim, part of what happened when they were a victim for a child, they try to resolve it, they try to resolve it, they try to fix it, but they couldn't. And so they just had this growing sense of helplessness, which led to a sense of hopelessness. And what happens today in adult life, as soon as they run into a problem, they jump immediately in their brain to feeling hopeless. I can't fix this. It's too much. I don't know what to do. And they get stuck in a victim mentality. And then they think everybody else should fix it for me. So a key part of recovery is coming to the point where you go, I am, was a victim, but I am no longer a victim. It is going to take a lot of strength and a lot of courage to take the power back for my life, to make the decisions and do the stuff necessary to get healthy, but I will do it. I am no longer going to blame others for my present day decisions. They influenced me as a child, but I'm the one that controls the decisions I make today.